Moms and dads, I bet you can relate to this email. Kirk, my son is just like the kids you described in your podcast. He comes home feeling defeated after school, feeling like he isn't smart. But I got him Crunch Labs, and he loves it. Building the new toy and watching Mark Rober makes him feel smart. And then he explains, talking a million miles a minute, like our kids do, all the cool science facts he's learned. It's like I get my real kid back when he's building his Crunch Labs toy. And that is exactly why I was so psyched when my niece first told me how her son loves Crunch Lab. Confession, this is the one sponsor I wanted more than any other because it's such a perfect fit for our kids. So go to crunchlabs.com slash calm and you'll see why. Crunch Labs is a STEM monthly subscription build box for kids. Your kids get a really fun toy in the mail every month. And what kid doesn't love that? And then they put it together by watching a step-by-step video from former NASA engineer Mark Rober, where he teaches all the cool physics that make the toy work. Mark's passion is helping kids think like engineers. And this helps your kids develop resilience and problem-solving skills while having a ton of fun. Get your kids something they will actually love, use, and look forward to getting all throughout the coming year. Build your child's confidence now. Visit crunchlabs.com slash calm and get your kids Crunch Labs today. When you bring your child home for the first time, you want a baby monitor you can trust. When you choose Stork, you choose technology trusted to monitor 10 million babies in hospitals every year. Stork continuously tracks your baby's pulse rate, oxygen saturation, and temperature. Visit MassimoStork.com to learn more. Stork, a revolutionary baby monitor, is born. Stork is not a medical device. Read and understand all product labeling. Massimo data on file. Hey, everybody. This is Kirk Martin, founder of Celebrate Calm. Welcome to the Celebrate Calm podcast. I'm glad you're here. So we've been doing a lot of live uh, workshops lately for parents and teachers getting ready for the school year to begin, and you can feel the tension and the dread of like, oh, here come all the calls from school. Here comes fights every day over homework time, and now we've got that schedule getting kids up in the morning and putting them to bed, and dinner time's a fight, and breakfast is a fight. And everything's kind of difficult. So you can feel that oozing off of parents and um, teachers as well. And so um, I wanted to address what I think will be, in many ways, the key to the coming school year. There's not just one, right? And we'll, in later ones, as we get into school, we'll go through giving kids tools to succeed and ways to do homework in different ways. But let's start with kind of a broader thing, things that you can actually change right now. And so before I do that, a couple things. I just a couple questions I had from people at workshops. I just wanted to throw in little things to watch that are maybe counterintuitive. Um, uh, uh, one mom and dad had their son plays uh, uh, baseball or uh, some sport. This happens a lot, and um, the kid doesn't do well when he strikes out or if he's playing golf when he makes a bad shot. So the kid kind of melts down, and so you've got to use some wisdom with this. But with some of your kids, you know what the best thing you can do is don't go watch them play. Ask them. Ask them if they just want to play without you watching because sometimes these kids need a lot of space and they need space to step up and kind of own their thing, but they feel so much pressure. So at times it's best to not watch your child play and let them just own it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I want to look, part of this is I want to liberate you to do what works best for you and for your child, not what works best for everybody else. Because you have kids that are very different, right, than other uh, people's kids. And so weird things often work with them. So don't be afraid to say, you know, we let our son go to his swim swim meet or to his activity and we don't stay and watch. Why? Because we want to let him own it and not feel any extra pressure. Uh, Because a lot of our kids actually melt down because they're embarrassed by their initial reaction. See, when your kids get really upset and we're right there witnessing it, well, now they double down because, oh, I knew I just acted like a big baby or did something immature. By the way, it's what happens to a lot of men, including me. That was a big trigger because I would see myself 
and hear myself, what I was saying to my son or to my wife. And then all of a sudden it snowballs because I know they're looking at me. And most men, like me, have a hero complex. And so now that's all shattered because I just threw a tantrum in the middle of the hotel at check-in or at the restaurant because things didn't go my way. And now your wife and kids are looking at you like, uh, you're supposed to be some great corporate executive and now you're melting down. And so that embarrassment of them seeing me would often make it worse. Same thing happens to your kids. So give them some space. First thing I want to talk about, although we just talked about a few things, is this. I want you to learn to be tough with your kids. And I know people are always like, oh, celebrate calm. You want to understand your kids and why they're doing things. Yeah, I do because I want to get to the root of the issue. But I'm not soft with kids and I'm not too sweet. Being sweet with with strong-willed kids is a recipe for disaster. So I don't want to be sweet and always talking like this because that voice is irritating to a kid. But I also don't want to be, you know, you're a rebellious kid and you can't control yourself. And I don't want to lecture and yell either on the other side. I want to be right in between there. And my tone has to be, don't mess with me. Just don't mess with me. Look, you can hear, that's confident. I'm not messing around here, right? Being calm doesn't mean you're a pushover. It doesn't mean you speak timidly because your strong-willed kids are like little sharks and they will smell your fear. So I want you to be firm. I want you to be confident, right? And if your child is demanding, you've got every right to say in an even matter-of-fact, decisive tone, look, if you continue to be demanding, I'm not going to read to you anymore. But if you choose to speak respectfully, then I will, your choice, right? And I like that because I'm putting ownership of the situation in their hands. Look, I'm good either way. I just want to let you know what I'm going to do. I can't tell you your choice, but I can tell you what my choice is. And I've got too much self-respect to sit around and have you talk to me like that, right? That's that's called self-respect. It's controlling and changing yourself, not them. You can talk to your teenager and just say, look, you say you want to be in control of your life, but you and I both know you're not even in control of yourself. Fortnite is. It's controlling your moods and behavior. Look, it's not my job to control you. If you want freedom, then you need to step up and stop making excuses. See, that's a tough but very honest talk and very respectful talk to have with your child. I'm not going to go on and on about uh, all, all the lecturing and the research shows that when you do this, blah, 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 blah. I'm making it very sweet and uh, not very sweet, but sweet and short, but I'm making it short and concise. And I'm just letting them know, here's the lay of the land and how things work. And then when I tell you things, I'm just going to let you know what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to do it, right? Does that make sense? You're not yelling at your child. You're not demeaning your child. You're just drawing very clear boundaries, and you're letting them know what's expected. And then you're backing up with your words with the integrity of your actions. Right? Does that make you, does that make sense? And sometimes your kids don't listen to you because they don't respect you. And sometimes that's because you don't respect yourself. Parents who are too sweet outwardly end up being the very ones who yell, lecture, get resentful, and threaten, right? Because you're like, I tried to be sweet to you, but you wouldn't listen, so now I'm going to go completely opposite. But parents who lead with firm, calm authority, who don't take it personally, and that's huge, who clearly state their expectations, who teach their kids self-control, they don't need to yell or threaten, but it begins with self-respect. And so the message and tone that you're taking is, I don't need you to like me. I don't need you to validate me. I don't need you to be happy with me or even love me. But I do expect you to do what I asked you to do. Does that make sense? Can you hear that in the tone of voice? It's not so much about the words, right? I want you to use the words, right? And that's one of the things I think we're very good at doing is giving you actual scripts to use. So if you don't get it already, get our free newsletter. Just sign up at CelebrateCalm.com or email Casey, uh, C-A-S-E-Y, CelebrateCalm.com. Ask him to put you on the newsletter because then you get this and the words are actually written out 
and I have parents who have a, a email inbox filled with all of our newsletters, and they can pull it up and say, oh, there's the script for that situation. And that's why, honestly, I love people listening to the CDs because you hear the tone all day long in your voice uh, it, it, through me. And then when your kids come home or you see them, now you've got that tone of voice and you've got that script, and it's a really powerful thing. Quick question here is this. When you, for you to be honest about, when you tell your kids something, do you dread their response? Are you afraid they may not like you if you're tough with them? Because I get that a lot, right? I get even some dads are like, well, I don't want my child not to like me. And so when moms do that too. And so when that happens, you're not leading with confidence. You're trying to judge their response and, and you're manipulating in a way, right? Rather than being firm with things. So anyway, I want you to work on this, okay? Let's work on this before the school year starts. And here's one way I'd like you to do this. And I call this like, this is one of the big secrets to stop the ex- escalating and lecturing. And um, I wrote this in a newsletter and it was based on an email I just got from a mom. And a mom said, I used to have so much guilt over yelling at the very kids I loved more than anything in the world. But when I finally worked on my own anxiety and issues, my kids changed quickly. And she said, it's so counterintuitive, but it's changed my life and our family. Bingo, mom. Great job. Quickest way to change your child's behavior is first control your own. And the biggest thing that you can work on right now as we start school is not your kids, but working on your own anxiety about your kids' performance and behavior and future, right? So I want you to wrestle with this idea that the greatest gift you give your family is not what you do for them, it is what you do for yourself. And it will sound very selfish, but it's not. And here's why. If you do not work on your own anxiety and control issues, you will find yourself lecturing and badgering and even maybe berating your kids because you're going to react to everything they do and take it personally and then make it about you. And that cycle never ends well because you see your child not living up to your situation. You're going to lecture them and say, oh, if you would just apply yourself, you know, you're capable of so much more. And I don't know what, uh, and then your kids will end up shutting down. They will resist you. They may talk back. They'll go more slowly when you're in a hurry. And that really has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with you. And you're the only person that you can change. And I've said this a lot recently, but I want it to sink in. When I was in that kind of freak dad mode, always reacting, what I was telling my son is this. I need you to behave right now and do what I say, because if you don't behave, I'm not sure I can behave and you do not want to see me angry. See, instead of controlling myself, I was trying to control my son precisely because I couldn't control myself. I was asking a child to manage the emotions of a grown adult. And that's just wrong, and it doesn't end well. But when you begin the day with the mindset that the only person I can control today is myself, and I focus on controlling and calming my own anxiety and my own worry and frustration and my own need for things to go just right, my perfectionist tendencies and my control issues and my need for kids to do the things the way I want it done, you will discover three things. One, when your kids act out, you'll find that you don't react and lecture and take it personally. And so instead of making it about you, you are able to respond with calm, confident authority. Number two, you have the clarity to see that that child screaming at you is really crying out for help. And instead of you needing the child to behave so that you can behave, you become the trusted leader and authority figure who provides and protects for your child. See, we're all into like, well, I'm the authority figure. Well, my tough message to you is act like it because we're not acting like it. We're acting like, well, I'm the bully and the boss, and I need you to do things my way, and if you don't, I'm just going to yell at you or lecture you. That's not what an authority figure does, right? My job is to be there for my child to become that trusted leader so that my child actually feels safe coming to me with his issues because I've got answers and solutions for him. 
not just another lecture and demeaning him because they never listen. Number three, you begin to calm situations instead of escalating them because all of that talking, the lectures, all of those things, all of that pressure merely escalates every single time. And once you begin to calm situations and it becomes very natural, you're going to start connecting with your kids. And when you connect with your kids, you will find that they become more compliant and helpful. And the other side benefit is this. Once you slow your internal world down, and it's not all spinning with your own anxiety and drama, now you can look outwardly and you begin to help other people and notice that it's, all, it's not all about me. And so watch how this works. When I focus on controlling and calming myself, when I focus on taking care of my own internal world, ironically, it enables me to be much more giving and outward focused. Does that make sense? So the greatest gift I give my family is not what I do for them. It is what I do for myself so that they don't have to walk on eggshells and manage my own emotions. And look, this, this took me three years, way long time ago, and like $3,000 in therapy to learn this stuff. And so I know people complain at times like, oh, your products are so expensive, but they're really not because you're changing your entire family tree for generations. And most of the time, we're, we, you know, I put, when I do pricing for our stuff, I make it kind of based on therapy, right? So if we've got a program like this week's special, go onto our website, celebratecalm.com. You'll see a thing, get the bag. And we've got it reduced in price for the cost of one trip to a therapy to therapy. I'm going to give you like 12 hours of very practical strategies to show you how I calm down. And we're going to throw in how to get your kids to learn the first time. Kate, uh, Casey's program, my son's program, teaching your kids how to control their own emotions and impulses. And we're going to give you insight into all of um, every, everything we know about strong-willed kids. Anyway, if you need help with that, go to the website, find it on there uh, under Get the Bag. You can look under a product section, section. Also, email my son. His name's Casey. He'll help you out. He is just like, was just like your kids. It's Casey, C-A-S-E-Y, at CelebrateCalm.com. He will help you if you want us to come to your school, right, and, or your church, or um, like uh, we're speaking up coming to a foster care organization. If you want us speaking and bringing this live, reach out to Casey. You can call him at 888-506-1871, and he'll help you out with all of that. But this week, let's work on this. Work on this for the next few days, putting your time into controlling yourself, into working your, on yourself, into controlling your tone of voice and watch how your kids respond differently to you. Hey, thanks for being a parent. I know this is hard work, but I know you're up for it. I believe you're capable of changing and changing your family tree. So thanks for doing this. If we can help you, just reach out to us at Celebrate Calm. Love you all. Bye-bye.